As promised, I said I'd talk about Tim the Giant Peach. Yeah, this is one of my most favourite films, but it is a fair game. Based off the book by Roald Darl. <sighs> you know, I would say something, but I'm not going to. Anyways, unfortunately this is one film Burton didn't direct, but he did help produce. The real director, Henry Selick, said that Burton's design choice was kind of dark for a kid's film. Thus, thus, like what Joel Schumacher did to him in the Batman Forever f film, he was bumped down to a producer and Selick took over production. Everybody already knows the story of James and the Giant Peach. Reached down to the last bone. The one thing that stands out in this movie is it was actually produced by Disney. Yeah, it's a Disney film. And like most Disney films, each song is more terribly, poorly, great, amazingly crazier than the last. I'm saying that because I have a gun poking at the back of my skull. Each, and guess who, and guess who wrote these songs? Hello, you get offending me. That's right, Randy Newman wrote those songs. And each one was more painful to watch through than the last. Although most people like this movie, I th still stand by my judgement that it's a film I'm definitely going to forget. Though I will give credit that even though I haven't reviewed, talked about it yet, it was nice that Henry Selick allowed Burton to add one thing from one of his movies. That's right, you may not have known that, but that skeleton captain from that scene in the movie was actually Jack Skellington with pirate's clothes on. Maybe this was a nod to The Nightmare Before Christmas, or was just Burton just too lazy to make other movies. Whatever, whatever it was, it worked, and Jim's Iron Peach is certainly a movie I never thought people would remember. And that was that. Join me tomorrow where I will be talking about... The last, we've only got two films left that I really want to get off my chest, and ne then we're talking about the 2010 Burton adaptation of Alice in Wonderland.